From Defiance High School's Bulldog Studio One, the Defiance News Network, featuring Mark Jordan, Ethan Engel, and Peyton Corusso. This is DNN. Hello again, and I'm Mr. Defiance. I'm Ethan Ingle. And I'm Mark Jordan. And go ahead and take it, Captain Quarantine. And this is DNN. If you were wondering why you're seeing my handsome self on a Thursday, it's because we don't have school tomorrow. Tomorrow, parent-teacher conferences. And Mark, do you know why Mr. West skipped town? Couldn't tell you, but I'm sure he'd love to meet my parents. Right. And now for some headlines. In our last show, we featured Riley Gerardo and her special project she created for her mother. A Flutter of Hope is a tribute to Riley's mother who is battling thyroid cancer. The funds from this project will be donated to the American Cancer Society. If you bought a shirt from last month, make sure you wear it on the final football game of the season on October 22nd. Turning to music news, next Tuesday is the first concert of the year for the DHS Choral Department. This year's fall concert will be held at Defiance Christian Church on Stanley Road. Pro, ironically, I go to church there. You don't go to church. Acapella, men's course, and women's course will be featured as well as a couple of instrumental students who will be adding their own talents to the mix. The concert begins at 7 p.m. and there is no ticket price. However, the choral department is asking all who attend the concert to please bring a bag of candy for the church because they are having a trunk or treat the following week. Homecoming was surely a night to remember and one of those memories was crowning of our homecoming king and queen. His and her Royal Highness Gabriel Wilfong and Reagan Nelson met up with our Joshy Thompson to catch up with them and discuss the plans of their reign. Thanks guys, so now I'm here with Gabe Wilfong and Reagan Nelson, the king and the queen. So, how did you feel when you won, or found out that you won? Well, when I heard my name called, I was like standing there like, I, I, I won, I, I literally won. And from there I kinda just accepted and roll, roll, rolled with it. All right, how about you, Regan? I couldn't tell whether it was me or Gabe that was shaking, but I mean, I guess when I heard it, it was like kind of unbelievable and definitely appreciated. So thank you for the vote and I appreciate it. Okay, and then as King Gabe, what is your first decree? My first royal decree as King Gabriel Paul Wilfong of Defiance, Ohio, is simply that the lockers be at a minimum six inches deeper. And then, Regan, how about you? I decree that mashed potatoes be served in the cafeteria every day. That's pretty good. Okay, and I know we all saw Gabe dancing at the bonfire on Thursday night. So Gabe, could you show us some of your moves? I already got some music. Oh yeah, we'll play right over it. Good job, Gabe. Thank you guys for meeting with me. Uh, back to you guys. Thank you, Josh, and congratulations to you too. We're not worthy, we're not worthy. No. No. All right. Student council elections were held last Thursday. The new freshman student council representatives are Dylan Johnson, Kendall Nolan, Daquan Brooks, Piper Lacey, and Madison Sukup. As members of the new student council, they will help plan the dances and other special stuff at Defiance, such as homecoming and prom, all that fun jazz you can attend, Mark. Oh uh, yeah, I hope so. And I really can't wait to see what they come up with, especially theme-wise. Uh, I guess so. The city of Defiance is becoming addicted to roundabouts. Two weeks ago, the third roundabout was located at the intersection of Cleveland and Ottawa Avenue. It was open, surprisingly. We sent out our Xander Valle to check it out for us. Xander, what do you got? Whee! Thanks, Xander. Canada holds a special place in Jackson's heart. He loves it so much, he went up there to do an investigative report. Here's a new Jackson investigate, so take it away, Jackson. Good 
Wednesday to Finds. I'm Jackson Hansberger, and I'm here in a place that you guys may have already figured out is not the Finds. But it's a place a little bit northern. Actually, let me take that back. A lot a bit northern. I'm in a country you guys may know as Canada. While I'm here, I've decided to not only prove Mark and Ethan wrong about me having a Canadian citizenship, but also I came up here to visit family, friends, and maybe even show you guys what it's like to be up here in Canada. So, the first thing that I did was help out my mom and my brother stockpile wood for my grandparents' furnace. All right, so, as you can see, the next thing I had to do was help clean the barn and get this baby calf to start nursing on its mom. So, Next thing I had to do was head up into the silo and start moving around the grain to make it all even. I think I might have to do some now, but sadly I can't bring in any footage. Hey guys, I'm here with my my family and we're, we're here in the big city of Toronto. We're just under the Rogers Center. I don't know if you guys can see that. So guys, I'm in front of the CN Tower which is one of the tallest buildings in the world. And over there, right behind me, that's the Rogers Stadium. That's where the Blue Jays play. So, I'm here at my aunt and uncle's house. And I got my cousin here, his name is Jacob. He's my assistant for right now. And Jacob, go grab the milk. So, you guys probably know that in America, milk doesn't come or it comes in gallons, but in Canada, they come in bags. Bags of milk, yes, that's right. And then you got a pitcher. Thank you, Jackson. I now understand that Canada isn't all maple syrup and Canadian geese. Up next is sports with Payne Kressel, but after that will be your second musical clue by Mr. West. But first, a segment called What's Behind This Door? Hey guys, welcome to What's Behind This Door. I'm Jackson Hansberger, and here at DHS, there are a lot of doors. Some we know what's behind them, and some are a mystery. So I want to see what's behind this door. I don't think I was supposed to see that. What's going on with this place? What's up, Defiance? I'm Peyton Kressel. Let's get into the Rapid Sports Recap. Starting off with the football team, who played Salina this past Friday, winning with a final score of 28-19, putting the record at 3-5. The Bulldogs go to Otto Glendorf tomorrow to face the Titans. Heading to the courts with the volleyball team, who also played Otto Glendorf, losing 3-0, putting the record at 7-12. The Lady Dogs go to Napoleon Saturday to face the Wildcats. Running over to cross country, where the boys ran at Portage, placing 8th out of 46 teams, while the girls ran at Anna, placing 10th out of 13 teams. Kicking it over to soccer, where the boys played Otto Glendorf this past Thursday, losing 3-1, while the girls played Brian this past Saturday, losing 5-0. Putting it over to golf, where they had sectionals, where the boys placed 7th and the girls placed 8th. Lastly, serving it over to girls tennis, who played Ayersville last Monday, but was unable to finish the match due to weather. Now heading over to Josh Thompson, who sat down with Jaden Jerger to see how his season went this year. All right, now I'm here with star golf player, Jaden Jerger. So Jaden, can you tell me about some of these accomplishments that you've had over the past season? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, well, obviously this is my senior year, so some of my goals were to be, you know, first team WBL, because I did that last year and that was one of my main goals. So I was able to achieve that this year. And then I actually set the school record set sometime in the 1980s, something like that, I don't know. So yeah, I did that too, and you know, but I'm more of a team player, so it kind of sucked because we had a couple matches where we got second, 
by a stroke or two, but yeah. So first team and then a couple school records and then I actually had some personal best from last year. That's great. Okay, and then golf is more of a uh, individual sport, but would you say that you're like a leader of your team and you inspire the younger players? Yeah, for sure, yeah. Like with golf, there's not really captains, but I like to be myself as a captain and not even in golf, just school, other sports, baseball, etc. But yeah, I do, I like to be myself as a leader because I like winning, I hate losing, I'm a very competitive person. So, you know, like teaching younger kids like things that I do and maybe they would, you know, like learn from me. So yeah, for sure I like being a leader. And then would you say Marcus Delaware Jordan is your biggest inspiration? Yeah, the man out there, like you look at him, he's just a stud, I don't know where he went, but yeah, that dude, he's, he's a phenom, There's no, you can't really describe it, he's just one of a kind. Thank you, Jaden. Yep, appreciate it. Well, that's all Defiance. I'm Payne Crestle, and I'll see you at the finish line. Hello, DHS. I'm here to reveal clue number two for the title of this year's musical production. I've heard several guesses based on that first clue, and I'd like to tell you that your guesses may or may not be correct. Here's your second clue. The music composer of this year's DHS musical has written music for movies, TV, and theater, including nine shows which appeared on Broadway, seven of which were based on feature films. This musician composed the music for five of these feature films as well. See you next time, Defiance. And now, this. Mark in the dark. <laughs> Come on, man, stop playing, you big baby. You like roast? Well, Noah Jordan sure does, and he really loves roasting the DHS staff in our new segment, Schooling the Teachers. Here you go, Noah. Hey, Defiance. I'm Noah Jordan, and this is Schooling Teachers, the segment where I roast teachers and hope that my grade doesn't drop. Today's teacher I know as Patty, but you might know him as Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy is a history teacher and a wrestling coach here at Defiance. But regardless of the boring things he does today, he used to do a lot of exciting things. Like this, where he crossed the Delaware River with his childhood best friend. Mr. Murphy's even been in a few blockbuster movies, including The Terminal, Supernova, The Fantastic Four, and Over the Hedge. However, those are not all his on-screen appearances. As you may know, The Simpsons are popular for having predicted the future with things like the election of Trump, a Nobel Prize winner, and Lady Gaga's halftime performance. However, in this case, they predicted what Mr. Murphy will look like three days from now. Obviously, some of you have had Mr. Murphy in class, and you might have noticed a few of these things, like how he talks with his hands, or how he has a sweet, sweet, soothing voice that can put you right to sleep. Or how he has a constant head nod. That's because his mother was Irish and his father was a bobblehead. All in all, Mr. Murphy is a great guy and an inspiring teacher. Kind of like how he inspired the disguise glasses. Thank you for your time, Defiance. Have a great weekend. And Mr. Murphy, you got schooled. That's it for this episode, but let's check in with Xander one more time. Whee! He's having way too much fun out there, bro. Be sure to tune in next time for a special Halloween episode. Enjoy your four-day weekend. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm glad to be next to Mark again. I'm Ethan Engel. Don't be sad that it's over. Be glad that it's... Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's over? No, Mark. It, be glad it, it's, it ha happened, Mark. What do you mean? Is it done? N Mark, no. Shut up. Shut up. Y you see, the joke was, be glad that it's over, and then... Be happy. You have to understand, I use my head a lot. I do play football. You got a big head on your shoulders. It's good.
Hui.